All right, so look at this one uh, right here. If we're given these three forces and we want to add the three forces together to find the resultant of the three forces, then we just need to break these three forces into their components. So let's start with, I don't know, this one right here. Um, I don't know how you like to draw these, but let me use that 60 degree angle and say this would be 200 uh, cosine 60. This would be 200 sine 60. And let me give it a, a value. Uh, 200 sine 60 is 173. 173. 200 cosine 60 is 100. All right, so I broke that one into its components. Let me do uh, this 100 at a 45 degree angle. That's easy. 45 degree angles, you can't go wrong, but this would be 100 sine 45 in the y direction, 100 cosine 45 in the j direction. Let me go ahead and give us those values, 70.7 70 70 and 70.7. And last but not least, let me do this third one. Break it into its components. This would be 75 times uh, sine 35. Remember, sine is when you're looking at you're, when you're looking opposite the angle. Cosine is when you're touching that angle. And so this one would be 75 cosine 35. Let me give plug those into my calculator. 75 sine 35 would be 43.0, and 75 cosine. 61.4. Okay, so I've broken them into their components, and so now if I want to add them together, I want to find the resultant. <clears throat> you can write those in I's and J's and add up all the I's, add up all the J's, or you can separate them kind of into X's and Y's, add up all the X's, add up all the Y's. I tend to like to do this one. All right, so adding up all the X's, I'm, I'm looking at all these vectors. So I'm, I'm kind of no longer looking at these three I'm looking at those six components, right? Three in the X, three in the Y. So I just look at all the X components. I've got a negative 173, right? I've got a negative 173 right here. This blue one down here is a positive 70.7. And then this one right here, positive 61.4. <coughs> so the resultant is negative 40.9. And see, does that make sense? Well. Maybe so. Maybe that one is so large, right? It doesn't quite counteract those two. The resultant is still a negative 40.9. The y direction, I've got 100 going up. I've got 70.7 going up. And then I've got negative 43 going down. Uh, so this would be 128. Uh, all of my units are pounds. Let's say determine the resultant. So let's say that the resultant is negative 40.9 in the I, positive 128 in the J. Units are pounds. That is the resultant. Um, that's the resultant written in Cartesian notation. And I would accept that. That's, you know, if I ask for a resultant, that's, that's um, the answer. That's what it is. Uh, but sometimes I'll, I'll go one step further and say, hey, what's the magnitude and direction? What's the magnitude and direction? Well, the magnitude would be 40.9 squared, 128 squared, take the square root. The magnitude would be 134. See if that makes sense. If I've got one component of 40, one component of 128, yeah, magnitude of 134. And the direction, let me, let me kind of draw this. If I've got a negative x direction, but then a positive y direction, then, then it would look like this. Uh, and so I could find that angle. If I've got 128, 40.9, then tangent of that angle, 128 over 40.9, uh, to, to, to inverse tangent, I would get that that angle right there is 72.2, 72.2 degrees. Uh, but I always want us to measure from the positive x-axis and measure counterclockwise. So I don't want this angle, I want this angle right here if this one right here is 72.2, then this one would be, what, 107.7, right? That adds up to 180. So here we go, 107, this is 107.7.
If I ask for a magnitude and a direction, I, this is what I want, 134 pounds at 107.7 degrees. Box in your final answer. Okay? So, I hope this is still review. I hope this is super easy for you because it gets harder. Uh, this is just the math that we're going to use in the future when we're summing forces. You need to be able to say, okay, what's the X component of this force? 200 sine 60. What's the X component of this force? 100 cosine 45. What's the X, you know, 75 cosine 35. Add those together. Add the X's together. Add the Y's together. Don't try to add an X with a Y. <clears throat> kind of keep them separate. At the end, if you do need to bring them together at the end, you need to get the magnitude and direction of those at the end.